And I've had days where my time in range is like at 95%, which is, I didn't actually think that was possible for people with type 1 diabetes to be like that. But here we are. What brings me joy is that I'm, the anxiety about the future has diminished to a point where I don't worry about it too much. Um, I don't, I'm not as worried about complications. I'm not as worried about how am I going to manage this disease when I have kids and I have to manage their lives too. Um, so just, there's just so much joy in being free from that anxiety of managing my disease, being able to care for myself in a way that reflects that has made all the difference for me. My blood sugars are more stable. I have more energy. I've lost weight. I feel better about myself, both my diabetes and the way I look. Um, and I know what I'm doing for myself is the best thing I could possibly do. So it really is seeing my food as medicine, but mastering diabetes will help you see your food as medicine and also make your medicine really tasty. <laughs>
um, when I didn't know what to do with my blood sugars or I'm like, hey, is this normal? Does this happen with other people who have changed to this program? Uh, she was right there, always available to me, always able to bring me off the ledge if I was feeling super anxious about something. And especially during that initial adjustment period when your blood sugars are usually quite low because your your insulin needs change so much. It was so comforting to have her there and be like, okay, so I've seen this before. You need to do this, 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 and this, and that should stabilize you. Um, and it was, I was super grateful for it. And then it was also just really nice to have someone to say like, I said, oh, I made this recipe today. It was really good. Um, how would you adjust for not having cheese? Because that was my biggest thing. I just, I wanted cheese so bad. Of course, I found that I don't, I don't really miss it much anymore. But having Linda there saying, like, okay, when I gave up cheese, this is what I did to do it. And just having someone who's done the same things as you was so, was very valuable to me. Um, I've been finding that any of the kind of Middle Eastern dishes that Mastering Diabetes have have been my favorite, which my husband thinks is hilarious because I don't like, I've typically not liked spicy foods before. Um, and now I'm sitting there putting like cumin and paprika and chili powder and just putting all this stuff in my food. And um, he's amazed. And I just, I love the Middle Eastern stuff. They smell so warm and comforting. So like the lentil, anything with lentils in it is so good. And then they have a, it's an East African lentil stew is the one that it's like my go-to recipe. It's so easy and it's so yummy. <laughs> okay. So when I started on in at the beginning of September, uh, my fasting blood glucose was about 9.5. Um, I guess I could probably translate that into uh, American. Fasting blue, blood glucose was about 170. Um, and that was like, that was the average. Of course, sometimes it was higher and sometimes it was a little lower. But now my average fasting blood glucose is about 130, which is phenomenal. Um, and it's not something I really paid attention to as a type 1 diabetic, but here I am just putting it in our group chat every day just because everyone else is doing it. It's nice to know, I guess. It's a good metric to know if your overnight basal is working well. Um, my A1C when I first started was 7.6, and I've always kind of been stuck around that eight range I've never been able to get really like 7.6 was the lowest that it had ever been and I worked super hard to get it there before I started and um and it was always frustrating to me especially when my doctor was like hey you know if you want to get pregnant you're the recommended a1c is 6.5 percent for people with diabetes and I was like there is there's no way I'm ever going to get there and my a1c at on November uh or, or yeah, November 14th was estimated at 6.8. So it's actually almost at the recommended uh, spot to have a healthy pregnancy or a pregnancy with fewer risks, um, which is huge. I never thought it would ever get that low. And you know what? I haven't been working that hard to get it there. I've just been following the Mastering Diabetes Plan and it's kind of just naturally come down. Um, so that was it. That's actually a huge one for me. And I know the A1C is not a perfect metric for measuring how well you're managing your diabetes, but it also feels really good when it's at a better, when it's lower. It just feels good to get there. It feels like, like a reward. <laughs> um, my weight has, uh, I've lost 12 pounds in September, which is not something I was really looking for, but also... I wanted it. Um, I was at my heaviest at 157 to about 160. Uh, that's the heaviest I've ever been in my entire life. And I was having some body images issues and I knew that I wasn't being healthy. But when I started the program, it was important for me to not focus on the weight and to focus on what, what I was benefiting from um, health wise and in my diabetes wise. And so during the six weeks, I stepped on the scale at the beginning and I stepped up, stepped on the scale at the end. And before I stepped on the scale at the end, I realized that it didn't actually matter what that number was going to be because I felt so much better. Um, I knew I was taking care of my body. I knew the food I was putting into it was good for it. Um, so no matter what the number was going to be, I was going to be really happy. And when I stepped on the scale and I saw that I had lost 12 pounds, so I'm now sitting about 145. I was actually shocked <laughs> and it feels really good to be at that point now where I don't have to worry about what's on the scale because I know everything I'm doing is keeping me really healthy. Um, so my carbohydrates per day uh, before when I was 
before I was doing the mastering diabetes method, it really varied wildly. Um, some days I'd be eating like 115 to 130 carbs. And then like on the weekends, usually I'd be eating close to like, it could be between like 200 and 300 carbs, depending on where we're going out to eat. And none of them are good. They're all like pizza, fast food, French fries, that kind of stuff. And then during the week, I was barely eating anything because I was too, I didn't get any food ready or I was just grabbing something on my way out the door. Um, but now my carbohydrates per day are about 250 to 275. And that is every day. So every day I'm eating the same amount um, and my body has gotten used to it and I have so much more energy and it's crazy that I've eaten so many more carbs, but I'm taking so much less insulin. <laughs> um, so my fat per day has been a huge difference. So before I was eating anywhere between 20 and 55 grams of fat per day, I was eating like, I was using olive oil in my cooking. I was eating cheese. Um, I was eating fried food. I was eating the heavy cream dressings and stuff. Uh, so really it depended on what I was having that day, but the fat really did add up. And now on average, I eat about 10 to 12 grams of fat per day. Um, and that's made a huge difference on my insulin sensitivity. You guys are not kidding when they say it works. Um, and my insulin per day, which is the fun one because my carbs have stated, have been at the, are now at the high range of what I used to eat. And I have gone from using 45 to 55 units of insulin per day. And now I only use between 30 and 35 units per day. And it's going down. Like I just had to adjust my basil down and I'm going to have to adjust my uh, lunch bolus down already because I'm going low in the afternoon again. So it's going to be lower than that. So yeah, that's, uh... oh, the other big measurement is my time and range. So my time and range used to be about 51% when I started and my time and range most recently was at 79%, which is a huge jump and very happy with it. And I'm very excited to see how much closer to hundred I can get. And I've had days where my time and range is like at 95%, which is, I didn't actually think that was possible for people with type one diabetes to be like that, but here we are. What brings me joy is that I'm, the anxiety about the future has diminished to a point where I don't worry about it too much. Um, I don't, I'm not as worried about complications. I'm not as worried about how am I going to manage this disease when I have kids and I have to manage their lives too. Um, so just, there's just so much joy in being free from that anxiety of managing my disease. I would say you have to go for it. It is the changes it's made in managing my diabetes and how I view myself as someone with diabetes have been immense. I no longer, I'm no longer forcing myself to fit in the mold of someone who has a fully functional pancreas. And I understand that I'm different and that my body has different needs than everyone else. And accepting that about myself and being able to care for myself in a way that reflects that has made all the difference for me. My blood sugars are more stable. I have more energy. I've lost weight. I feel better about myself, both my diabetes and the way I look. Um, and I know what I'm doing for myself is the best thing I could possibly do. So it really is seeing my food as medicine, but mastering diabetes will help you see your food as medicine and also make your medicine really tasty. <laughs> so I look forward to what I'm going to eat now. I look forward to um, talking about what recipes I'm going to try with my husband. And it's such... And it's such a welcoming and helpful community as well. And that's the one thing about this that I can't talk about enough. The people who are doing mastering diabetes and living this way are so amazing and they're so helpful and they're always willing to answer your questions. And probably when I'm done my six months of coaching, that'll be the part I miss most. I'll miss the Facebook page and I'll miss my daily chats with the people in my group.